Mexican newspaper has printed its final edition. The decision to close came after a reporter Miroslava breaches death. She was this week, a newspaper in Mexico's Ciudad Juarez called El Norte published its final edition, shutting down its printing presses. The reason given had nothing to do with digital technology or slumping ad revenues, the things newspapers around the world are struggling against. The owner said he was closing his paper after 27 years because continuing to report the news in Mexico is just too dangerous. The most recent journalist killed there was Miroslava Breach, a correspondent for the national paper La Jornada, who was shot dead by an assailant who left a note at the scene which read, for being a loudmouth. Breach was one of three journalists killed in March, all of whom were reporting on crime, corruption or the drug trade. Mexico is the deadliest country in the Western Hemisphere to report from. And what galls journalists there is that the murders of their colleagues routinely go unpunished. Charges are few, prosecutions are rare and convictions almost never happen. That culture of impunity has many in the media theorizing that the police and the prosecutors who should be targeting drug barons are in fact working for the wrong side. And many media outlets in Mexico, El Norte included, are financially dependent on state governments for lucrative advertising contracts, which means that they may be compromised in their work as well. Between the conflicts affecting the various players, allegations of official corruption, the ever-present threat of violence from the drug cartels, and the mounting death toll, there's a surplus of news stories in Mexico and one fewer newspaper to report on them. Our starting point this week is Ciudad Juarez. Impunity is really the fuel that keeps aggressions running. And that is because any person who right now wants to impose censorship on journalists, on the media, by violent means, knows that he can get away with it. And the way that he knows that is because the person who did it before him got away with it. It was a one-word headline a 27-year-old newspaper saying goodbye to its readers. A little more than a week after the latest murder of a Mexican journalist who had done some work for El Norte, its owner-editor wrote that due to the fact that among other things there are neither the guarantees nor the security to exercise critical, counterbalanced journalism, his paper was closing. The case of our journalist, our contributor Miroslava Bridge, opened my eyes. It made me think about the fate of the journalists who have been murdered and about the investigations that haven't led to any findings. It also made me think about how in 27 years we have had to overcome so much adversity. It is very dangerous for a newspaper to operate in these regions. What I know about the case of El Norte is that they were already facing severe financial problems that threatened to end their operations. In my opinion, the killing that took place recently only accelerated the decision. With eight journalists killed between 2014 and 2016, Mexico is on a par with Iraq and almost as perilous for reporters as Syria. But unlike conventional war zones like Syria, where reporters can be collateral damage, victims of crossfire, the media casualties in Mexico are all targeted. And few killers ever pay the price. Of the 23 journalists murdered between 2006 and 2016, only two cases ended with convictions, an impunity rate of 91%. The other thing that sets the killers of journalists in Mexico apart is how brazen they are. Leaving notes at the scene, which happened after the Miroslava breach murder, is typical. And it's not just journalists. Bloggers or others online critical of the drug trade have also been killed, strung up for the world to see with notes attached. And not all of the messages the murderers leave behind are scribbled down on a piece of paper. In 2014, we documented the case of Maria del Rosario Fuentes. She used to speak out on violence in the state of Tamaulipas, especially coming from drug cartels. She was abducted, 
and her Twitter account was taken by the perpetrators. And they started tweeting how she was being beaten and how they supposedly murdered her. Attacks against journalists are so bold because they are tolerated. There is impunity. Even when politicians say in their speeches that they are going to address these issues, the truth is nothing happens. They don't bring the criminals to justice, and this sends the message that no action will be taken. This story is not as clear-cut as drug gangs, criminals and the corrupt killing journalists and then governments at the state and national level failing to prosecute. They have been accused of working together, being intertwined. The Press Freedom Group, Article 19, monitors media around the globe. It tracks all forms of aggression against Mexican journalists, from verbal threats to cases of physical assault, all the way up to murders. It reports that last year, there were a total of 426 such incidents in Mexico, 53% of which it blamed on public officials at different levels of government, the same governments that come up woefully short when investigating the killings of journalists. So if we're saying that more than 50% of the attacks are coming from government officials and they are the ones in charge of investigating the cases of violence against the press, it's not so hard to understand why we have 99.7% of impunity in cases of violence against the press. Government officials don't want to investigate these cases because they know they will come directly back at them. The problem with the, especially the, the murders of journalists, is that sometimes the reaction of the authorities has been, no, he was into something, no, he was consorting with criminals, no, he was having an affair and this was like a passionate crime or whatever, because they don't want to appear as though they cannot guarantee freedom of expression. So whenever a journalist gets killed or attacked or kidnapped, beaten, their first instinct is to blame it on something else. Self-censorship among Mexican journalists is common, and not all of it is the result of violence, real or threatened, at the hands of criminals. Many media outlets, like the recently closed El Norte, are reliant on government advertising to stay in the black. And when the primary democratic institution that you cover is effectively keeping you afloat, that's yet another reason for Mexican journalists to watch what they say, to self-censor, as if they needed one. Most of the media in Mexico survive thanks to official advertising, and every government believes it has absolute power regarding how to use taxpayers' money. Therefore, while the use of public funds should be regulated, what happens is that different state institutions use the funds to control what can or cannot be published in the media. The government uses money as a tool. If you behave well, I'll pay you on time. If you don't behave well, I will not pay you on time. Sometimes, they just don't include you in their budget. It is an instrument to control the media. Because when the government is writing the checks, even media that is privately owned can, to a degree, be state controlled. Covering the drug trade and the risks that come with that is not the only problem Mexico's journalists face. It's just the most lethal the one that gets the headlines. The issues, the tales of collusion and compromise, run much deeper than that.